All right, so doors open here at the Terracotta Warriors, really highly anticipated tourist attraction at 8.30 in the morning. And with that in mind, Ivana and I have just arrived here now at 8.30 in the morning because we're assuming this is going to be very crowded and very popular. And so we want to be one of the first ones in as to capture the best video for you all to enjoy. Woo! So let's go check out, uh, I think the crown jewel of tourism here in Xi'an. Let's go. Okay, and because we have a drone in our bag and we're not allowed to bring it, we have to drop it off somewhere first in one of the office to get in. Ah, yeah, close. Good, good. Let's go. Well, that's pretty easy, actually. Yeah. Mom, is that right. We're gonna fly. We just always have it. We doesn't. Yeah. Good. Let's go. All right. So we're gonna buy the English audio guide now. Two people. Two deposit one hundred. What deposit is one hundred? Okay. Hello. This place stop is GPS. GPS. Okay. GPS. Actually, the audio guide such a good idea uh -huh. because much cheaper than if we pay for a guide right. like a person with us all day and yet we get all the information so right. i'm set i'm happy good. let's go so there are three different bits where the terracotta warriors are located and we're going to number one first because it's the biggest of the mall let's go all right so the visuals here are pretty spectacular but first things first i think ivana and i made the right choice coming here immediately when the doors open because the crowd is already massive and everybody is up against the fence overlooking the incredible terracotta warriors because like i said the visuals are impressive but what really sets this place apart is the history so the story goes something like 2200 years ago the first emperor of china died and he ordered all of these statues to be built so that he would not be lonely in the afterlife you can see row after row they almost look manufactured they are life-size soldiers in this particular pit and you'll even see some horses which have an empty space behind them because Previously, there was a wooden chariot behind the horses, although obviously disappeared with time. And so what's impressive is although it looks kind of manufactured and perfectly organized, they are all hand carved and all totally unique and pretty well preserved throughout time, although some of them are headless, which is sort of funny to see. And so what's really incredible is this place is absolutely massive. You can see thousands and thousands of people here enjoying and yet it was totally forgotten in history and sometime I believe in the 70s two local Chinese guys were digging a well for their farm and they discovered it and this sort of revelation began of this incredible terracotta army of soldiers that was there to uh, accompany the first emperor of China in the afterlife so it's an absolutely incredible story and to be clear this is only one of the pits so we've got lots to explore today and if we get lucky we'll find some open patches of fence where we can go and enjoy ourselves because most of the fence is just uh, covered and surrounded by people who are really in awe of the incredible history here. You can see they're all the same sort of brown color because terracotta literally means baked earth and so they're made from clay that has been uh, heated up and made solid. But you can imagine that 2,200 years ago, they were also hand painted in bright colors. And so you can imagine how grand this place would have been. Thousands and thousands and thousands of hand carved and brightly colored terracotta soldiers in honor of the emperor. It's something kind of similar, maybe not as big and world famous as the pyramids in Egypt, where it's so grand and so old and the history is so ancient and unique that it's like, how did they even do it? And it's really amazing to imagine. So beautiful today, but actually even more beautiful 2,200 years ago when it was fully intact. And uh, it's just a joy to walk through. And I guess you can see some of the restoration is still ongoing because so many soldiers and horses, uh, it's been a 30 year project that's still going. I tell you what, this audio guide is absolutely fantastic. For one, it's GPS based. So all Ivana and I have to do is press play and it knows where we are for yeah. what information is relevant. So the ease of use is five stars, but also it's got some incredible information on it, including all of the terracotta warriors are 100% original. This is why you'll see some gaps and even chunks out of their head missing because the archeologists decided not to patch in what's missing with new terracotta clay. Rather, they decided to clean up what's there and glue it all back together. So it really adds to the feeling in there because the ones that are perfect and all intact, you know that they're original 
2,200 plus years old. Uh, incredible, it's like going I back know. in time. Wow, it was before Christ, everyone. <laughs> it's a long time ago and it's very well intact. So something very special. And what's awesome is that's not the only pit. So we've got more uh, chambers to go discover. That's Let's good. continue. And we're going to pit number three the smallest of all the three pits. So being the smallest of the pits, archaeologists believe this place to be the headquarters of the Terracotta Army, also because it's located sort of behind the army of soldiers we had just seen. Now, there's a sort of empty post in behind the four horses, where typically the high commander of the army would stand, and archaeologists were unsure as to why this place was empty, and there was no high commander, and so they figure that probably this means the emperor, who's dead, would be commanding this army in the afterlife and he will sort of assume this position uh, in the afterlife. And so naturally this place is spectacular in its visuals, but as we learn more, thanks in large part to the audio guide, this place really comes to life and the legend sort of grows. And so I'm having an absolutely six star experience. I love places like this and there's still more pits to discover. So let's keep going. <laughs> Good one, Ivana. And so I guess pit two here is not fully excavated yet, but archeologists are assuming this pit was for the more specialized warriors, be it the archers or the cavalry, because there's more complicated battle formations here, as well as the soldiers seem more highly trained. And so not only was this an army for the emperor to command in the afterlife, but it's a battle trained and highly sophisticated army, which is sort of incredible. Now, what I love about archeology span is they keep using the word assume. There's this sort of incomplete data they have and the archaeologists have to sort of fill in the blanks and sort of guess what was happening that far in the past. And this really sort of triggers your imagination because there's a lot of uh, wondering and a lot of mystery and intrigue to the sort of incomplete data that they're slowly unearthing. Now, I think there's like a museum or maybe a video just over there. Maybe we'll check it out because I think it'll show what this uh, area will be revealing once it's uncovered. So maybe we'll go check out the museum or video over there. Let's investigate. And so Ivana and I paid a little extra money for a little video here. Because Pit 2 is not fully excavated, we've got this sort of CGI video. And the audio is coming through some wireless headphones. Perfect English and very good. <laughs> Would recommend the extra payment for the video. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so here we can see the more sophisticated formations as well as the archers and cavalry showing that this was the more highly trained warrior uh, section. Wow, this is a great video. Almost like virtual reality. <gasps> the screen is pulling up and there's a bunch of figurines behind it. Oh man, look at this. So I guess what was happening there was after the video screen pulled up, there's a bunch of terracotta inanimate objects right there, horses and people, soldiers, and then they use projection screens in the ceiling to animate the inanimate objects with really mesmerizing swirls and flames and galaxy nebulas. It was amazing. I can't recommend that enough. Yeah. We didn't really know what it was. We just thought it was like seven, eight dollars. We go for it. It was so good. I loved it. It's worth the 68 yuan. It's worth 68 yuan. Unfortunately, you guys couldn't hear the audio because we had wireless headphones uh -huh. on, but they were telling amazing stories and doing like battle cries and with all the graphics, six stars. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. And then at the end, just to make things even more funny, I guess they took our photo on the way in yeah. and they show us what we would look like as a terracotta. I didn't know it was for that. I didn't know what it was for photo. either. I didn't know either. It was so they just funny. said, stand there taking the photos. So, okay. And Ivana's terracotta soldier had glasses on. <laughs> I love that. The first glass, glasses in history, baby. <laughs> yeah, the first pair of glasses. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. And I guess behind the glass here is the most complete of the soldiers they found. So everybody is crowding around trying to get a photo. I guess this one has almost no cracks on it. And so uh, highly photogenic. Everybody wants a photo. I'm going to stay back because it's chaos over there. But. Uh, there you have it. By the way, 
五一米八，这个人已经差不多有一米三。And so, massive shout out to Ivana for making it to the front of the massive crowd, shoulder to shoulder, playing some rugby, tackle football, and getting the uh, footage of the very well intact sculptures. I couldn't quite handle the crowd. Now, you might be wondering, where is the Emperor's tomb? Because all of these pits were for him in the afterlife, so you might wonder where is his body buried. And so, interestingly enough, archaeologists believe they know the location of his tomb, but they are nervous to open it. Because according to some texts they found, there are lakes of liquid mercury in his tomb. And so on one hand, they're not sure the validity of that claim, because how did these ancient people know how to get ancient mercury? And how would they have put it there without everybody involved getting sick and dying? because it's so toxic. But on the other hand, the archaeologists are nervous to open it because if there is mercury in there, everyone who opens the chamber is going to be doomed because <laughs> it's so toxic. And so I sort of like this uh, aspect of the story because as we literally unearth uh -huh. and uncover more of the history, we can sort of unearth and uncover more of the assumptions and piece things together. But some things are better left to mystery. So no one's seen the inside of the emperor's tomb and maybe nobody ever will because of the potential lakes of liquid mercury inside, wow. which is something crazy. Now, last but not least, we do have the exhibition hall, which we're not sure what's inside. Let's go explore. So far, love this place, and I'm assuming the exhibition hall will continue to deliver it because it's awesome over here. Let's go. So the exhibition hall is a series of museums where we learned that 700,000 workers were responsible for digging the pits to occupy the terracotta army, which is almost unfathomable. And not only the army, but also the entertainers that were down there and the many statues of exotic birds. Mm -hmm. So the emperor not only had an army at his disposal, but also some things for leisure and entertainment. It's a full afterlife for the emperor. And so in the end, it took Ivana and I about two hours to see everything. And it is really getting crowded in here now. So I would really recommend coming at 8.30. Oh. Yes, exactly. The earliest is the better. Is the better. And I want to end off by saying this audio guide is amazing. Yes. Because in the entire museum, there's posters with no English on them. But the audio guide does all the English heavy lifting. And throughout all the pits, the images are one thing. But when you understand more of the history, it comes to life and it's so enjoyable. And I would absolutely recommend Audio Guide. Yes, absolutely. So good. Loved it. By the way, when I die, I want someone to build a statue of Steve. You want a terracotta Steve? Terracotta Steve. You want life size or you want in your pocket? Life size. Life size. Yes. Okay, okay. That's a deal, babe. <laughs> There you have it, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Must do in Xi'an. Highly recommend. Yes. Later. And then, what's the idea here? I guess I'll go like this. Oh. Safe and sound. Oh, and as it turns out, when you exit, you walk through this big strip here of malls and restaurants. And so it's a bit of a exit through the gift shop phenomenon, which is really elaborate and uh, massive and well done. <laughs>